Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am proud of myself, I have two weeks in a row. Thank you for joining me. Today is a special kind of video because it marks the end of an era. Whilst I'm incredibly sad as a mum because no one actually prepares you how sad you may feel about having your last child. Whilst I'm sad as a mum that my daughter will be leaving nursery in a few weeks time, it marks the end of an era when it comes to my budget and spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds each month on childcare fees. So today I wanted to share with you 10 things I wish I knew earlier when it comes to childcare. Now for some context, I'm a mum of two. I have a boy who is 10 years old and also a girl who is who has just turned three years old. I keep wanting to say two. It's been a whirlwind. Everything has changed so much, even in the time between having my son and my daughter. So there'll be no doubt that in about six months to a year's time, this video may be a little bit out of date, but I do believe there's some timeless tips that will help anyone along the way. So the first tip is to label absolutely everything. It makes life so much easier. My daughter, especially when it comes to jumpers and cardigans, those are the items she tends to lose. There's lots of labels that you can get out there. I personally like the ones where you can iron them on, um, but there's so many other labels that you can have. Really affordable. You have to get a big batch of them, which will last a while. The next one is something that I had no idea about, although I was ready for it when it came to my second child and that is prepare to get sick for continuous colds and coughs bugs you name it both my children they really really did come down with a lot i found it incredibly stressful because then they struggle to sleep throughout the night and you're struggling to get through the day at work you may be struggling because of childcare. It could mean making sure that you've got a couple of quick and easy meals to chuck in the oven having an emergency that's my children playing right now. They're having like an emergency medical kit. So always, always making sure that you've got cowpole. <gasps> always have a spare bottle of cowpole. Thermometer that's working so you can check the temperatures. Whatever works for you, just making life a little bit more easy. Another one which I made a huge mistake both times with my children is I did not register them early enough this way. I guess it was with everything that was happening with lockdown, I was focusing on just trying to have my baby. Never mind, I wondered about the nursery. If I was to do it all again, I would definitely check out the nurseries the minute I found out I'm pregnant and everything's okay. So I'm with my daughter, I was waiting for about seven months, the wait list, but no idea when I was going back to work. I really wanted to stay at home for as long as possible. Following on from that, tip and making sure that when you are ready to put your name down on the wait list for a nursery make sure you've got the funds for it and maybe during pregnancy saving up some money for any registration fees now i know every nursery is different when the nursery my son went to he did not have to have a registration fee however the one that my daughter went to need to put down a hundred pound registration fee put a name down on the list i was on maternity leave at the time that was a lot of money to find um, and obviously there's a sense of urgency just to make sure that you get their name down as soon as possible so that you can go back to work. Another one that we don't really consider is sort of a back to nursery starter kit, both yourself and for baby. I found that when I took both my kids back to nursery, there was lots of little costs that soon added up. So whilst I did try to be cost effective as possible, there was still a lot of different things that she needed from a sun hat to a water bottle, a nursery bag to lots of spare clothes. There's even extra things such as in our nursery nursery we have a little fob for when we're out of the nursery in my little son's nursery we just knocked on the door and they answered another big one for me is which is tax free childcare that is something that I almost missed out on, but I had to do a little bit of research. I think it's a little bit disappointing that not every nursery tells you about this. And I think, especially in the current climate that we're living in with cost of living crisis, the high energy bills, the mortgages going through the roof, we really do need to know about schemes like this. The tax-free childcare scheme has been an amazing scheme that I really benefited from. A few conditions around it. So basically you can get up to 500 pounds off your childcare bill 
every three months you'll log into a system and then every three months you'll just reconfirm your details and you'll make sure that you pay your money into that system and then they make up the difference for me personally my bill in the most recent months i think it was 817 pounds but then by the time i had discount from the tax-free childcare, it dropped down to 655 pounds which is a huge difference imagine what you can do with that over the course of one month which is and then imagine the cost of that over the year that's like nearly two thousand pounds maybe a lot of money which you could use towards a holiday emergency fund paying your bills more comfortably what following from that another one is making sure that you're signed up for the 30 hours free childcare. now this is going to all change in the near future i believe next year it's going to drop the current age range as it currently stands in august 2023 once your child hits three years old which my daughter's just turned three she will now qualify for 30 hours free childcare. My daughter's going to be going to preschool so this means that we're no longer going to have nursery fees however if we decided to have kept her in nursery then her nursery fees would probably drop down to about 200 pounds a month but there's pros and cons to the 30 hours free childcare. Preschool you no longer have to pay anything it is term time only whilst in nursery they can go all year round but it just means that you'll have a much smaller bill because you'll have your tax free childcare that's discounted off because obviously we're going to sign up for that and then on top of that you're going to have your 30 hours free childcare but the way they work it out is they tend to spread it out over the duration of how long the nursery is open for. So let's say the nursery is open 10 hours a day, and then 30 hours will only cover three days of the week. So then you'll find that you'll have to pay for the final two days if your child's going to nursery five days a week. Making sure that you're very clear on how much your nursery bill is going to be before you commit to that nursery. Another one, which is a pretty obvious one, but making sure that your kids to nursery with old nursery clothes that you do not care about, because I am so thankful that is something I've always done. My daughter's come home from nursery just being absolutely filthy, and sometimes the clothes just end up getting a bit more worn in. Whilst they don't always have rips in their clothes, they end up being just a little bit worn in and just not quite the same. Make sure that you just send them to nursery nursery in clothes that just you really don't care about and I must say when my daughter goes to nursery she doesn't look her best but at least I know that I don't have to worry that she's gonna get a stain on her clothes or that she's gonna get them really mucky she has nursery clothes and then her weekend clothes another one is checking what the nursery offers and um, some nurseries are very inclusive they offer lots of different things so they may offer nappies other nurseries I hear sometimes it can vary so with my son I noticed a difference so I'll talk about nappies for example in my daughter's nursery nappies are included in the fees no longer in nappies but when she first started she was no matter how many times she needed to go to the toilet they was always going to change it and there was no limit to how many times she needed changing however in my son's nursery i always had to bring nappies with him at least five that wasn't included in the price the one is sun cream I'm not quite sure i can't remember with my son if i needed to bring that with him but i know with my daughter's nursery that's included in the fees I don't have to bring sun cream. Finally, another one is work. Uh, this is more in relation to mum, yourself. When I first had my son, I was in a pretty strict role where I had to come in all the time. And there became some conflicts because I kept getting calls all the time saying, come and pick your son up. And I didn't have any childcare. I didn't have no one to fall back on. And it was very difficult at the time. And eventually we did come to an, an agreement that on those days, I can work from home. Thankfully with my daughter, I been working from home for quite a few years now and with my daughter my company are often very understanding and thankfully over the last few months it's been getting much better is when we was going on holiday in Portugal I thought you know what I really can't risk her being ill during our holiday so you know what she's gonna be at home for the week before both my partner and I took a bit of time off the week before and we kept her at home so that we could enjoy our holiday and we she wasn't gonna come down with a real really bad sickness bug just before or during the holiday and we was able to enjoy it. The mind is it's often the first six to 12 months which are quite bad. But once you get through that stage, their immune system builds up and it definitely, definitely gets easier. There we go, that's 10 tips that I wish I knew earlier when it comes to childcare. 10 tips that I practice up to now. I use so much money, it's helped me when it comes to my work. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you.